why I'm over here at the Niemeyer station, checking some things out. They know we're coming here and watching and looking. We know that we're doing more than atmospheric research, ice core sampling. They're watching something. Or they're communicating with something. When you come here, you'll see some strange things. If you're not Johnny on the spot and capture them, and you'll find that the strange things, they normally will get rid of them pretty quick. Or they'll, they'll cut them out and splice something else in. Sometimes they won't even splice anything in. And they have changed camera angles. They have removed certain cameras. At least at this time, there are a couple missing. You don't get good views for them anymore like we used to. They know that we have seen things and showed it and shared it and talked about it. It's like this. See, you'll see tracks in the snow. You see the time here. It's 6.10. And in 10 minutes, you get this with no tracks. And you get tracks. No tracks. Tracks. No tracks. Tracks. So, I believe that they've caught on to us. Tracks. And you still see some tracks there. But I believe they've caught on to us, and they do their best to confuse us now by staying on top of these cameras here, and getting rid of pretty quickly what they don't want us to see. But they are watching something. It is said, or hypothesized, that whatever is incoming, if you can see it better, the southern location. I believe that they have a, where is it, well, is it Puerto Rico that they have Arecibo Observatory maybe? Well that's, um, as far as the telescope goes, that's a pretty, pretty sweet location for them to be peering out into space. That's not to mention the other toys they have in space. Hubble. Other satellites. The Earth is littered. I read an article the other day about all the pieces of space junk. Well, who put them up there? You know, they want to talk about global warming, and it's, it's, it's man's fault, man-made global warming. Well, whose fault is it that you put the article out that said that there was a ton of space junk littering space all surrounding the Earth? Did you guys put it out there? I didn't. No. It's the same... 
lie and taking no responsibility. See, they'll do stuff like that because they're trying to break into different dimensions. You get me? This is not all about pioneering space. Boldly going where no man has gone before. No, that's not what it's about, and that's not what it's never been about. That's what CERN's doing. They're looking for dark matter. They're looking for certain particles. They're looking for a way to make the key work in the lock, the dimensional lock that God has locked to keep us safe. Every once in a while, there may be a few of them get through. There's a battle going on above your head. It always has been. It never stopped. Not just here in the physical on the earth, but above the earth in a different dimension. Different, the spiritual. Why do you think they always talk about the gods live on clouds? Everybody's always, the gods came down from above to here. The ancients, the ancient gods, those nasty fallen angels, they came from above. Well, what do you think, what do you think is above you? <clears throat> it's not necessarily a planet. It's dimensions above your head. And that's really why they go to explore these places and want to send the rovers and this, that, and the other, because they know they're not just going to land on something. They're actually going, they're actually leaving this dimension. You ever think in a little different terms? You know, they've, they've schooled everybody and brainwashed everybody about gravity and mass and, and everybody just eats it like candy and just takes it because that's science, right? They give you mathematical and physics reasons why all this is. And because they're supposed to be papered and doctorated and PhD'd and they got bigger brains than you supposedly, then you figure they know what they're talking about. And so it is decided for you what is possible and what is not possible, what is real and what is not. But there is something coming. God said wormwood would come. And it will. Now this is their newest little article about a flyby of an asteroid, <clears throat> mountain size. Now wormwood is supposed to be like a, a, a fairy mountain you know, it comes and hits in the water. And you've had people spoken out in the you know, past about dreams and visions of uh, a large object splashing down. You know, we have uh, heard more than one speaker talk about his visions of a splashdown somewhere near Puerto Rico. And not, not too far long ago, we had somebody putting a time frame out that it would be September which that would be about the last blood moon time. Now, my personal opinion is I don't believe that's going to happen in September. 
Why? I believe that these four blood moons are warnings. And with each one, different things are going to occur that are just whether you whether the media will let you know or not, things are just gonna get worse. I believe the last blood moon is our final warning before things really, really start getting worse. So I don't believe uh, you know what's gonna hit the fan in September. Not that way. But I do believe the wormwood is gonna come. I don't believe it's 2004 BL86, which, you know, that's pretty close, but not real close to the Earth when it flies by. <clears throat> They're also telling in the article that it's not going to be a threat of hitting the Earth. And different things that we've looked at. Don't like to trust NASA, but they have been accurate on several of the last ones of the close flybys. So they're saying that this is not going to impact. Of course, never a straight answer NASA. They do not be telling the truth sometimes, huh? As we know, they mislead and lie quite a bit. But as far as these flybys go, <clears throat> I think they're right on this one. But Wormwood will come. The Destroyer. You know, call it whatever. Call it Planet X. Call it Tenth Planet. Columbus, Gabriel's Fist, whatever name you want to tag on it, there's one name that sticks out more than the rest, and that's Wormwood. And when God tells you something, you can make book on that. It will come at some point, folks. It's not going to be avoided. And something like that happening... It's going to cause a lot of stuff whenever that hits. I don't believe it's the end of this year in September. But I do believe we're not long off before something like that happens. And I don't believe they're going to tell us and give us a time frame whenever that's going to happen. I do believe that when it does, people are going to be caught off guard because not that many people um, look up in the sky. And frankly, they're too busy working and staying inside and just not paying attention. They're, they're grounded. You know, their vision is grounded. The farther they look up is over the dash of their car or the mailbox out in front of their house. So by the time people start seeing something that maybe looks like a star to them, it gets bigger and bigger. They're not really going to think anything of it until it's really visible. If it's coming pretty quickly, then there's not going to be a lot of time that you have anything to do. Can you imagine trying to think of going somewhere and then trying to go if, if if a lot of people were trying at the last minute to go somewhere, the roads would be packed, wouldn't they? So please protect yourself and put on the armor of God. All of it. Tell him that you're sorry. Ask for his forgiveness. Let him know you're trying. Let him know you love him. Put your trust and your faith in him. And no matter how things happen, He'll take you home to be with him.